in order to succeed, in order to grow, you got to fail. My dad, like I said, my dad had a different method of madness. All growing up, he would he never accepted failure. Mm-hmm. It was always looked down upon. Mm-hmm. So because the failure was looked down upon, I was scared to even attempt. Yeah. So I did a lot of just existing. I never really was able to live my true childhood and attempt things because I was scared to fail knowing the repercussions of my dad. Mm-hmm. Now where I am in, as, as an adult, I realize I've only learned, I've only became successful, I've only evolved through failure. Yeah. The first attempt in learning. Mm. Fail. Yeah. Welcome to this episode of Keep It Positive, sweetie. I'm Crystal Renee Hazlett, and today we are talking about Activate Your Greatness with my dear friend, Alex Tucson. I can't believe I'm here. I'm so happy to be here with you. I can't believe you're here. I told you I would make the promise. Like, I wasn't going to flake on you. I'm, I had to come through. <laughs> for for uh, a real one, I had to come through. You did so that. I'm, you got up early this morning, caught a 6 a.m. flight absolutely. to be here with absolutely. us today. Wow. I'm, I'm you grateful. know why? Because you would do the same. Absolutely. Without question. Oh. Anybody that knows you knows you do the same without, Absolutely. without heartbeat. You know I got so you. So you got to return the blessing. That's it. That's I love it. you. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. you. I love you too. Oh, you know man. That. You know that. Period. Period. <laughs> so we start every episode with a song or a quote. Okay. And I can't start this episode without your quote. Feel good, look good, do better. Absolutely. That's what you live by. Yeah. And um, for those who do not know, Alex is a Peloton instructor, which most of the world knows him as. You are a Puma athlete. Um, you're a businessman. You work in the fitness, tech, music, sports, and entertainment industry. Yeah. Um, and off um, the bike, you have a foundation, Absolutely. the Do Better Foundation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, I met you virtually in 2020. Yeah, yeah. Um, during the pandemic, I um, didn't have any workout equipment in my house, and I was like, I need something. So I purchased a Peloton bike. Thank God you did. Yes. <laughs> Thank God you did. Listen, I got the Peloton bike, and um, from there, I fell in love with the way you instruct. Mm. I was like, this guy lights a fire under my ass. Right. Like, you don't take no mess from anybody. Nah, we ain't wasting time out there. We ain't wasting time out yes. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to learn your background, having a military background, it made me understand your way of training and how you talk to us through that bike. That's right. That's right. Um, but you touched so many lives through that. And then we met personally, um, we connected on Instagram, then we met personally at a Hawks game. Yeah. We yeah. share a common love for sports. Yep, yep. I feel like we've all, we always run to each other. Hawks, uh, Heat? Heat game, yep, because yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Heat is your team. That's for sure, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's Hawks Heat game, and um, literally the rest has been history, yeah. and I'm just so happy that I passed across. You are such an amazing human being. Appreciate um, and I'm lucky to get to know you beyond the bike. No, nah, not lucky, blessed. blessed. I'm 0% lucky, 100% blessed. Yes! You know that. That's why I say I'm thankful that you purchased the Peloton bike because there's people who come into the community mm-hmm. and become members, but there's some people who come in and become family members outside the platform. Yeah. And obviously, you're one of those people that uh, became a family member instantly for me. So yeah. I'm honored you joined the Peloton community. For Thank sure. you for so sure, much. Sure. Thank you. Um, going back to your childhood, you um, talk about in your book. Yeah. Activate your greatness. I'm so proud of you, Thank you. for this Thank as well. You. Um, you talk about your upbringing and um, the journey to getting to the Alex Tucson yeah. that we all know today yeah. and that we admire so much. Tell us a little bit about your childhood um, and what really molded you to be who you are today. First off, my parents. Mm-hmm. I got to start off with the two people, who, like the pioneers of this, uh, my mom and dad. My dad being an oil engineer and a uh, I'm going to space out for a second. What branch did my dad serve? Navy. Mm-hmm. I had so many military family members, it's yeah. so hard to keep up sometimes. Yeah. My dad served in the Navy, and my mother was a doctor, teacher for 30-something years. So all I've ever known in my entire life has just been family sacrificing, mm-hmm. always sacrificing for the better of others around you. Um, as a kid, I was an extreme knucklehead, though. <laughs> I, I've been kicked out of every school I've ever been to, including military school. Almost got kicked out of high school as well. Wow. Um, and that's just because I wasn't a bad kid. I just had a, like a issue with authority mm. and that to be honest with you the most authoritative figure in my household being my father mm-hmm. just that clashing non-stop yeah. but I tell people all the time like I'm a product of somebody whose father went above and beyond mm-hmm. same with my mother to mm-hmm. make sure I was put in a position to win life and yeah. thrive in life I just never understood it and always took it as resistance mm-hmm. versus assistance right and that's just due to my perspective of life mm-hmm. um I, I I think to myself all the time like how fortunate I am to have two parents that were extremely present. Yeah. I just never was able to 
live to the excellence that they demanded being two Haitian immigrants coming to the United States without knowing the language of, of, of how we speak, right. let alone being able to like economically wise, like just so many different things back mm -hmm. in the 70s and 80s. And I'm like, how did you even accomplish that? Right. Let alone thrive in that space. Yeah. Um, and I look back now and I fast forward as a, as a young adult and I'm like, all right, I understand it. Mm -hmm. I understand that you guys did the best you could with the, re yeah. with the resources you had. Mm -hmm. um, and I never lived up to that growing up as a kid. So what yeah. I'm trying to do right now is rewrite that and trying to validate my parents' sacrifices every single day. So this book is like one of the steps of me validating everything they implemented yeah. for my brothers and myself. Growing you did up. a really good job with this Thank and you. telling the story. Um, once you got, um, you went to, you got kicked out of school and your yeah. parents were like, we're fed up. Yeah. And it was really your dad. It was really my dad, yeah. Your dad, <laughs> mom really was my dad. like, uh. Mom was like, let's keep them close. Like, yeah. I'm, the, I'm the baby of the family. I got two older brothers. So yeah. my mom was like, let's keep them close. My dad was like, nah, mm -hmm. we're, I'm shipping you out of here. Right. Sixth grade. Um, it was either Haiti or military school, and I, I mean, I think I got the good end of the stick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I got the good end of the stick. Oh, uh, yeah, but, um, military school, for sure. It, it was one of those things in life that, like, I felt as if I wasn't, a, I don't really want to use the word abandoned because there's people who go through that actual mm -hmm. stage in life, mm -hmm. but it did feel like a sense of I'm not even worthy enough. So instead of my dad leaving, I was, like, he was like, you're not worthy, you, you gotta go. go. Yeah. Um, and at the time, that broke my heart. Yeah, right. and you talk about that in the book about how it, like, to this day, yeah. when you really think about it, you feel pain. It, it, like, there's just something about it that I was so young at the time. I was in sixth grade. Mm. I was 12 years old, going on 13, getting shipped into the middle of nowhere, isolated, completely distant from friends, family, anything that I knew that was, like, the normalcy for Right. Me. Um, so when I think about it, I'm just like, damn, I went through a rough stage, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, that, like... Unless you were there with me at military school, you have no idea mm -hmm. what it's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the only people that know are the people that were with me. Yeah. Um, and those things you just keep close to the heart just because, like, they're dark moments in life. Absolutely. But we've been able to obviously push through and break through mm -hmm. to get where we are today. So I've been able to use the same things that were somewhat dark moments in life mm -hmm. as positive moments to inspire the world with, for yeah, sure. You've done an amazing job with that. Thank you. Um, how does Alex work through those dark moments? Because I know, like, me in therapy, I've learned that those things that happened to little Crystal, yeah. she's, I'm still dealing with those yeah. as an adult. How do you deal with that? Two things, therapy, like actually speaking to somebody, mm -hmm. and thankfully my job is a form of therapy for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, as somebody who's been in the industry now 11 years, I, w I joined from mopping floors to cycling. Mm, say I that again. From mopping floors to cycling. Don't We're gonna talk it. about the story too. We gotta yeah, talk we about gotta that story. Because people see the, all of the- They don't realize where it started. They don't. You know? Yeah, we gotta talk about that too. Um, through movement though. Movement of the mind and the body has allowed me to have a new perspective of life. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that until I started moving my body on a bike that went absolutely nowhere. Mm -hmm. But mentally and emotionally, I went so far. Yeah. So every day that I was pushing pedal strokes from the day one 11 years ago till now, mm -hmm. I tell myself like, push these pedal strokes with an intent and with a purpose because mm -hmm. it allows you to carve out who you want to be every single time. Mm -hmm. And if you miss a pedal stroke due to you negotiating with yourself or you doubting yourself, you could be missing an opportunity to carve out who you want to be long term. Wow. So I try every single day, like even within the classes that I teach now, I tell people like, sometimes I don't teach for y'all, I teach for me, you just happen to be there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, right. Because it's been such a form of therapy for me for so long. Yeah. Um, so I would say the movement, movement of the body and the mind has allowed me to mm -hmm. have a new perspective of life for sure. That's amazing. That's I know that um, we've talked about some mornings where you like, I just, you don't always feel like yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. But we never can tell on that bike. The it's minute like, that red light clicks on, there's just something like gratitude. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to quote myself out of the book, but like no, yeah. gratitude cancels out my negativity and fear. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, damn, I get to do this for a living. Right. I get to get on a platform with thousands of people show up to listen to my crazy self-talk <laughs> and like, or just unscripted, unfiltered, just mm -hmm. like if I'm in a bad mood, I can tell people I'm in a bad mood and move like that, but mm -hmm. also break through with people in real yeah. time. That is a blessing. That's why I'm so thankful for the Peloton community and the people that support every yeah. single day. Because as an instructor, you get a lot of the, thank you, you changed my life. Thank you, you changed my life. Yes. And for a lot of the members that read this book now, they're like, oh, it makes sense. I'm like, no, thank you. Yes. Because this has helped me change my life. Right. So it's, it's reciprocated at all times. I love at all that. Times. Yeah. I love that. Let's talk a little bit about the journey. Yeah. To walk us through the steps that it took to get to where you are today. Because I think it's so important. Yeah. I, um... I went to school for audio and video production. My dream job, if you look at my high school yearbook, was to be a uh, ESPN cameraman. Wow. That was my dream job. So I always loved audio and video. I loved film. Um, and I went to school and I, was, I applied myself for the time that I was there. I truly mm -hmm. did. And that was to try to 
being that my mother was an educator, my brother's an educator, and my dad was like, if you don't work or go to school, you ain't living in this house. <laughs> there was no option. Yeah. I, I went through a dark period in college. I don't remember exactly what just happened, but it just wasn't clicking. It felt like I was just buying time and existing to mm -hmm. like make my parents happy, but I really didn't find what was making me happy. Right. Um, car gets stolen in college, and I hit like an ultimate rock bottom, but I still don't tell my parents that I'm not going to school. So like every day I'm faking like I'm going to class. And I'm so scared to like disappoint mom and dad. Yeah. One day mom calls and she says, how's class going today? And it was the way she said it, which I, oh my gosh. Like, to mother. I already know that. All the mothers out there have a mother's answer. The way she said it, it yeah. was like she was waiting for me to lie to her. Yeah. And I was like, class is going great. And she just stopped. She goes, Lex, don't lie to me. Mm. And I didn't know that once you stop going to school, your student loans kick in. Oh, yeah. Oh. I didn't know. <laughs> so they she financially knew that I wasn't in school. Yeah. So she called and she said, listen, I'm not going to be mad at you. I'm not going to curse at you. I'm not going to flip out on you, but mm. you're going to have to tell your dad. Mm. And that was like, I was like, all right, reality just said it. Like, mm -hmm. now life starts today. Yeah. I know the minute that he finds out, my dad's so, he's the, mm. there's a method to the madness, but sometimes the madness is just madness. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, I come back home. We get into a big fight. He, uh, mm. he says some hard words to me that I want people to read in the book, mm -hmm. but those words were what I personally needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said those words as he said, get out the house and kick me out the house. Mm -hmm. So I lived in my best friend's floor for about like a year and a half, and I got a job at a company called Flywheel Sports. Mm -hmm. Now, this company is indoor cycling, so I'm coming to work every single day, mopping the floors, just trying to get a, a check, because I'm like, I can't be broke yeah. and sleeping on my best friend, so I got to bring something, like, you know what right. I mean? So I'm going, I'm walking to work, jogging to work, just to mop floors every single day, and I'm sitting outside of the studio, and there's like a fish hole in between the door. Mm -hmm. And I'm peeping my head in, I'm just listening to instructors teach every single day. Mm. So the same information, the same inspiration a lot of the members were getting on the opposite side, mm -hmm. I'm getting while I have the mop in my hand. Wow. So as the days start to go, as the weeks start to go, I start to be like, all right, let me start mopping with more of a purpose versus mm -hmm. like, this is just like a temporary mm -hmm. moment, yeah. not knowing what could occur long term. Mm -hmm. Thank God for this lady named Ruth Zuckerman, who's an angel in my life, till this day, one of my life mentors, wow. um, CEO of the company at the time. And every day she would walk in, she would acknowledge every single person in that building. She would never let somebody feel like they were less than. No matter if you mop floors, no matter if you were an instructor, mm -hmm. she acknowledged you. So that always made me feel special. Somebody mm -hmm. of power and status mm -hmm. noticing me in a, in a time where I really didn't even notice myself. I was mm -hmm. dark, dark mentally. Yeah. One day I'm just in the room and I'm playing, I'm playing my music, mopping, and my boy goes, yo, you know you could be an instructor, right? And that's why it's always critical to have these friends that believe in you when you don't even believe in yourself. Yeah, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, like, you're right. I can do this. I love music. Mm -hmm. I play music. I was in a marching band in the military, so I could count well. Mm -hmm. I have a military background, and I think I know how to motivate people. I don't know how to motivate myself, mm -hmm. but others, for some reason, felt a little bit easier. Yeah. Wow. So I gained confidence one day. I'm mopping the floors. Ruth, Ruth comes in. I say, Ruth, I have a random question to ask you. I don't think anybody's ever asked you, but I have a random question. Can I be an instructor? And I was somewhat joking, but I'm like, closed mouths don't get fed. You never know what could happen. Period. Closed mouths don't get fed. Yeah. I have nothing to lose in this moment right now. Mm -hmm. And she looks at me and like takes a pause and goes, give me two weeks of your time and let's see what we can do. Wow. And I, t I look back and I tell people now, the reason she even gave me that opportunity is because I mopped the floors with a purpose. I didn't mop as if I was a janitor. I mopped with a certain yes. purpose where she was like, if I provide him an opportunity, mm -hmm. I know he's going to run with He's going to honor it. He's oh going to honor gosh. it. gosh, yes. So she, she locked in with me for two weeks. I did somewhat of an audition with mm -hmm. her, and she was like, yo, you're going to change the game. So I started teaching. It was like day and night. Like I mm -hmm. went from mopping floors to teaching. Um, but it didn't happen. It happened so weird because I'm teaching the class. I'd get off the bike. I'd run to the computer. Uh -huh. I'd clock in. I'd mop the class up. Because wow. so, my identity was in the mop for so long mm -hmm. that I was like, I didn't know how to let it go in all honesty. Right. Wow. There was something Ooh, about it that like it, I couldn't let it go. It kept me humble. It kept me grounded. Mm -hmm. But it kept me inspired for more. I didn't feel less than with a mop. Mm -hmm. I, truly, I truly didn't. Yeah. And because of the opportunity she gave me was one of those reasons where I was like, why should I leave the mop? I could get paid to mop floors and teach class. Let's right. double up. <laughs> I was like, let's double up. Like, I'm going from broke to a little bit of money. Right. Like, all right, let's, let's, all right, let's double up. Wow. Um, she called me one day. She said, you got to stop mopping. I'm just end the story. Mm. For you to like execute this career the way you need mm. to, you got to stop mopping. I told her, in order for me to put this mop down, mm -hmm. I go, what's the industry standard of classes? Mm -hmm. She says 15. Mm -hmm. I go, I need 25. You better know your word. I said, I need 25. <laughs> yeah. And she goes, why? I was like, you don't understand. I got, like, I got to prove my dad wrong. Because mm -hmm. of what he said to me on the walkout. I still yes. got 
The mopping floors was just a stepping stone. He, I got a job, great. Your mopping floor is great. Mm -hmm. But what you gonna do with your life? What career can you build out of your life? So when she said 15, I go, I need 25 because that's the only way I'm gonna be able to, I got catching up to do. Yeah. So many lot. people have been in the career for five, six, seven years. I gotta catch up somehow. Mm -hmm. I gotta outwork. Yeah. So that's been the mindset, outwork every single capacity possible. Mm. Um, the first two years of my career there were 8.30, 9.30 East Hampton class, hop on a Jitney two hour bus ride to the city, take a train uptown, uh, 4.30 Upper East Side, take a train back downtown, 7.30, 8.30 Flatiron. And I would do that every Monday and Wednesday. Mind you, people are teaching one, two classes a day in one location. Right. I'm teaching five in three locations. You know what right. I'm saying? So I'm bouncing around crazy. Mm. But I'm starting to find my purpose. Yes. I'm moving pedal strokes. I'm starting to find my identity. Mm -hmm. I'm moving mentally, emotionally. I'm starting to find my light, my inner light that mm. feel good. Yes. This is where the feel good starts. Okay. So like now I'm like, wait a minute. I'm able to identify myself as a in different individual because of the movement of the body and the mind. Mm -hmm. Now I'm able to look good from an internal perspective, which allows me to shine externally. People think that look good is like the, yo, let's get, let's put a diamond chain on, they get mm -hmm. fly. It's like, no, no, no. It's your energy. It's your mm -hmm. attraction. It's that top chair compliment when somebody's like, you glowing today. Yeah. That's that look good. Mm -hmm. So once I started to be able to identify the feel good and look good, yeah. I was like, the do better is like, oh, let's just run with it now. Let's right. just go. Wow. So I taught there for two and a half, three, two and a half years, three years. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell people all the time that uh, every day is an audition to be great. Those 25 classes a week yeah. provided me an opportunity for Peloton to recognize who I was. Mm -hmm. This is Peloton as a startup in 2015. Wow. Because I bounced around the city and they were doing recruitment, it allowed them to f go to different studios and see how I teach. Yes. Upper West Side, a different demographic than Upper East Side. Upper yep. East Side, different demographic than Flatiron. Mm -hmm. And I'm myself in all these spaces, but I didn't realize they were coming to class and taking it behind the scenes to mm -hmm. see, should we hire this guy? Wow. So 2016 comes around, mm. Peloton calls, they call Ruth. Mm -hmm. They don't call me directly. They go through Ruth. She pulls me aside and says, yo, there's a company that's going to change the game of fitness, and I think you should go. I'm looking at her like, yo, you just changed my life. What you talking about? I'm, going going I'm like, I'm right. in motion right now. I'm thriving. Everything is working perfect. Why, yeah. why should I go? She's like, listen, you've reached somewhat of a ceiling here. This mm. is the next chapter in your life. And I didn't realize what Peloton was going to be. I had no idea at all. Mm -hmm. She understood I was going to be the first black man in a lot of these people's homes across the country. Mm -hmm. I had no idea at all. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I didn't know what, could have, what yeah. was going to occur out of it. Yeah. But she always said, if you need someone to come back home to, you could always come back. So that gave me the opportunity to be like, you know what, let me take that leap of faith. Yeah, if you wow. tell me I could come back home and this don't work out, I'm gone. Yeah. And sure enough, we're here shoot, eight years later, and it's been <laughs> the craziest ride, but like the biggest blessing Crazy. by far. Crazy. But that's why I say it's not lucky. Yes, blessings. All blessings. Oh my all gosh. blessings for sure. Wow. First of all, shout out Ruth. Everybody yeah, shout out needs to Ruth. <laughs> a Ruth in their life. Yes. Um, that's my grandmother's name, Ruth. Um, but there's so many nuggets that I took from that that I don't want you guys to miss. Um, one is how you honored the mopping season. You know, a lot of people um, look down when they doing something they yeah. don't feel. They feel like I'm better than this. I shouldn't be yeah. doing this. You honored that. And then when you got the, you spoke about it. you. You did like me. No. I told Tyler, hey. I really want to do this. You had the guts to tell Ruth, this is what I want to Absolutely. do. Sometimes you have to speak up, You got to speak up. Close off, don't get fed. Somebody may not yes. know to provide you an opportunity unless mm -hmm. you actually want it. Yes, you know? yeah. yeah. And then even when you got that position, you were still eager to mop yeah. afterwards. But it's, it comes a point in your life that um, once you have to know when to let the past you go. You have to know when to let it go. I took a lot from that. Goodness it, gracious. It's one of those, I guess, I, like so many quotes pop up in my mind when me and you have conversations. Mm -hmm. And like within that just now, like it's, you can't shrink yourself in environments you've outgrown. Mm. I was put in a position to continue to evolve and grow. And yes. part of me wanted to keep that left foot in while the right foot was going. Yeah. And I was like, you have to let that go. In order to step into that new shell, that new alignment, the yes. new you, you got to remove yourself from mm -hmm. environments you've outgrown. Yeah. And it's not to say outgrowing the mop is a bad thing. It was just more though, like, yeah. you did that. You did it. And you, you got it. it. That season's over. It's over. Yeah. So no, no, one, no one to change seasons is a big mm -hmm. key. Oh, no one to change seasons season. is a big key in life. We got <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm going home with that one today. We always leave yeah, something. Every yeah, yeah. time we talk, it's like, yo, that was good. I'm going to use that. I'm using that one. Wow. <laughs> I'm using that one. I love that. Um, and from being a Peloton, being in everyone's home, we talked about you being the first black. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what was that like and what weight does that carry? Because I know... For me, it was important when I got on that bike Absolutely. to see a black man and a black woman. You and Allie Love and Tunde were my favorites. Girl. I always wanted to see something that reflected myself. And um, what was that like? I do want to know, because I'm sure being at, that was a startup company yep. and you were the first black man to be on that bike. What was that? Did that carry any weight for you? 
Um, it carried weight. The weight shifted throughout the years. Mm -hmm. um, when I joined, it was more of an excitement of like, yo, I'm the token black guy. Mm. And like, it's like, a, you think it's a cool thing to be like the only black person and you sort of realize that like, mm. wait a minute, I don't have all the information and the knowledge to provide this community the understanding of the black community mm -hmm. solely by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm a black man. I can't speak from the black woman's perspective. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I just, that's not something I could relate to. Right. So I realized early, early on that, like, yo, I'm in for an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. A lot of resistance because I'm, I'm unapologetic. You know, I'm, you well, I'm I'm straight with it. I don't. Yeah. I'm very like, I'm gonna take my drag off to go on the. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I wanted people to understand that, like, listen, I come from a certain level of respect, integrity, mm -hmm. the foundation of my family, the morals, the principles are so pure mm -hmm. that. I, it's hard for me to allow somebody else to be like, yo, what you're doing is crazy. Somebody's going to take that offensively. I'm like, well, that's them because I know where my heart is. Yeah. I know how pure it is. Mm -hmm. And when you're playing these songs, like, I'm, I'm trying to give them that real ATL hip hop, New York hip hop like, to yeah. let people know, yo, we here. Mm -hmm. In order for my community to be here, I got to showcase that we are here. Yeah. Representation matters. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how important me being the first black instructor was until Allie Love joined. Mm. And I say that because when she joined, it felt like one of the biggest weights off of my shoulder because I'm like, cool, I don't have to do this by myself mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And in the same space, we're going to be running together. Mm -hmm. And you being a black woman, excuse me, has a completely different perspective of life that I could actually learn from mm -hmm. in real time. Yeah. Now, Ali also is a different individual. She is one of the most badass people I know on this planet. She's so like badass. one of the most inspirational, most loving, mm -hmm. like heartfelt people that I know. Yeah. But she don't play about her business. Mm -hmm. So she helped me understand that like, yo, this isn't a job, this is your career. It's a, like, turn this into a career out of this. Yeah. Then Tune Day comes along, then mm -hmm. Jess Sims comes along. Mm -hmm. And I truly didn't realize the responsibility, or sorry, I don't say I didn't realize, I got a little bit lost in the hustle of what we were doing mm -hmm. until George Floyd got killed. Mm -hmm. And like the world stopped yeah. and I still gotta go to work. Yeah as a black man and mm. people are like what are you going to say what are you going to do? like yeah. i'm like wait a minute i didn't realize how it, fall, it all fell on me in that moment it did yeah and i'm trying to i'm trying to call my dad like yo dad this is crazy what's going on right now like as a black man i'm trying to call my dad for yes. like safety and peace and like mm -hmm. yo provide me understanding right and i felt like people were knocking at my door like yo what like what are you gonna say and i'm mm -hmm. like bro i don't know what the hell to say yeah so that was like the point where i realized how important this is mm -hmm. and how much responsibility I do have to show up because in that moment I'm like how I interact on that camera how I articulate on that camera the stories that I tell will allow people in their households in their communities to be like that's Alex Toussaint's perception as a black man mm -hmm. that may be everybody's reality and that's not the case right that's why I was so thankful for Ali Love Tune Day Jess mm -hmm. Sims to walk through the door because it's like we need to tell our stories in all different perspectives yes that's how we organically build our community here mm -hmm. at Peloton. Yeah. Um, so that probably was the turning point in me realizing how important this job was. Yeah. And I, I had to take it that much more serious at that point. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Wow. And I, I mean, I watch you, um, you know, like whenever you're preparing, you're yeah. like, I'm getting my music, my playlist yeah. together. How you, many times you listen to it. And um, you really take it very serious. Absolutely. And Absolutely. It shows. It definitely shows. Um, I remember in 2020 when George Floyd died and we had to sit in that. Yeah. And because you were one of the people that we watched every day just to like be active and do something, we were looking, we, like, what are you gonna say? Absolutely. And th that falls on us sometimes yeah. as celebrities. Yeah. Like, we wanna hear, what, why aren't you speaking up about this? That's, that moment helped me understand how much responsibility that I had. Mm -hmm. Those who can must. Yeah. In that moment, mm -hmm. I realized, I was like, all right, this is a call of duty. Like, yeah. yes, this is my career, this is my job, mm -hmm. but I have to like, I have to organically remain myself yeah. and inspire others that don't look like me mm -hmm. so they can communicate with me. Yeah. That has to be the key. Mm -hmm. That has to be the key. Yeah. I don't need you to I don't need you to love my classes. I actually don't like some of the biggest top quick top tier compliments that I receive is, mm -hmm. hey AT, I take Monday night hip hop. I'm like, you do? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, I don't take it for the music though. I take it for the message. Mm -hmm. And when I walk away from that, I'm like, they don't, they don't understand how much of a validating top tier compliment that is. Yes. That means that we could have a difference of music mm -hmm. but the understanding of love yeah. and the purpose and the intent of the message mm -hmm. is received yeah. for that hey i'm doing my job Absolutely. i'm doing my job yeah yeah um speaking of how you've turned this into a business ali told you hey this is your career this yeah. is a business i remember i took my family to um 
last year for my mom's birthday. Yeah, we went yeah, to New York. Yeah. We went to the Brooklyn game. I saw yeah. you there. And um, I'm gonna catch you courtside. If there's one thing about you, I'm gonna catch you courtside. No matter what city you in, I'm gonna catch you courtside. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> And um, I remember waking up because we stayed at the addition in Times Square because my family hadn't been to New York. Yeah, so yeah, you got to yeah. stay in Times Square the first time. We know where to stay yeah, after yeah. you've been here. <laughs> We're going to tell you all that. I'm going to do it again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, it's too loud. But um, I remember waking up, opening up my window, and there was this huge yeah. Movado yeah, ad, wow. and I see your face pop up. Then I look to the left, it's a huge smart water ad, and your face yeah. pops up. And I'm like, video, I'm like, Alex, you're everywhere. And I didn't see it yet, so you sending it to me was the first time I saw it. And wow. I was like, yo. It was crazy. I don't and then you drive past Peloton, you see your face. What is that like? Uh, till this day, it doesn't get old. Ugh. I'm just like, we made it to Billboard and Times Square before we made it to the police blotter in our local town. <laughs> like, Hello. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In all honesty, like, yeah. I, stuff like that, like, it, it seems crazy still, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. often pushing pedals on a bike. Yeah. But then when it occurs, I'm like, it's not crazy. It feels so, mm -hmm. like it was supposed to happen like this the entire time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, seeing your face on a billboard in Times Square, I'm not going to lie, that don't get old. Yeah, I was that blown away. Old. And it's, it's, it's like, more importantly, like, it gives me, like, hope to be like, yo, keep going. Like, mm -hmm. think bigger. Like, yeah. keep up, uh, open up your aperture mm -hmm. for other things that you didn't even think were possibly right. in your scope of vision. I never mm -hmm. thought I was going to be getting paid to drink water. Mm -hmm. Like, logically right. speaking. Literally. Like, let me be honest. Like, Something that you should be doing anyway. I asked my friend one day, my, my manager, I was like, yo, can you just do me a favor? Can you grab cases of water for the house? Like, you drink it as much as I do. Like, and he was like, yeah, I got you. A couple days goes by. He's like, yo, I got the cases of water, but like, I thought about it. We should have had a water deal. I reached out to Smart Water. Come and on, I was friends. just like, oh my gosh, bro. So to see it go from that, to then like a wow. global partnership, to then helping me announce me getting on the tread at Peloton, to now it's like it's all working the way it's supposed mm -hmm. to work. And it never feels like actually work. Yes. That's the best part. Wow. Speaking yeah. of the tread, I remember you called me and you were like, don't say nothing yet, but yeah. I'm about to be on the tread. I was like, oh my goodness. Like you literally have taken over everything. Un unreal. It's unreal. unreal. Like to, and it, people don't understand that to be a trainer the way you are, yeah. you have to keep your body Without top question. tier as well. You yeah. wake up every morning, you're in your gym working yeah. out. Before you go work, I'm about to die on the bike <laughs> and on the trail. I'm like, oh God. To think that you're doing something before that to Guys, even prepare for that is insane. The mindset has always been outworked. That's Gosh. always ever known. But the oh. tread, you know what it is? The tread has helped me um, 11 years in the cycling, 11 mm -hmm. years in the fitness industry, yeah. this feels like a rookie all over again. Mm -hmm. This feels like a new battery, a new like uh, yeah. jump start on the cables of being like, I'm, I have to learn. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not the top tier tread instructor. I'm not like, I'm learning every single day, yeah. every single class. So it, it, it feels great. It right. feels great. I love that. What does a morning from, for Alex Toussaint look like? Oof. There's no two days out of the same mm -hmm. because uh, I wake up. I wake up every single day at like six, seven a.m. That's mm -hmm. probably the one thing I do. Mm -hmm. But depending on the day, depending on my energy, I may knock out a workout right when I wake up. Mm -hmm. I may be like, you know what? I'm gonna chill, reset, walk outside, take time to be with the dogs, uh, knock out my meetings, and then do a workout. Gotcha. Um, but if any, every morning that I wake up starts with gratitude. Mm -hmm. Gratitude cancels out my negativity, and my attitude. That's, I'm a firm believer of that. Mm -hmm. So wake up, eyes open up, feet touch the ground. I do this. Um, Inhale your, inhale your confidence, exhale your doubt. Yes. And I do it three times just to like mentally reset and emotionally reset for the day. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's class in the morning or meetings, there's got to be a workout before 12 o'clock. Somehow, mm -hmm. like, just I got to get into the gym before 12 o'clock. Yeah. Because um, I know I'm going to get back into the gym at 4 or 5 o'clock because there's mm -hmm. two workouts a day right now yeah. is my regiment. Yeah. Um, but it's, I don't, there's no two days out of the same. Mm -hmm. My Peloton schedule bouncing crazy. Me working with Puma has me flying out crazy right now. So right. there's o the only thing that's the same every single day is the gratitude check. That's so amazing. Um, I saw where LeBron and Steph take your classes. Yeah. What is it? Because you're a huge basketball fan. Huge basketball fan. And you, let's go ahead and give you your flowers. <laughs> um, you play in the you played in the All Star game yeah. two two years. Two years. You're back the to MVP back. Um, 2022. 22. Was yeah, yeah, 22. 22. 22. Yeah. yeah, like Crazy. baller. Crazy. Listen. Can I tell you something about that? Yeah. As somebody who grew up playing basketball, mm -hmm. like, I'm a diehard basketball fan. That was the first form of therapy yeah. my entire life. When mm -hmm. they offered me the opportunity to play in the game, mm -hmm. Peloton will tell you this flat out. All the members that were in class, I looked into the camera. I was flying out on Thursday. I taught on Wednesday night. And I said, yo, I'll see y'all back next week with the trophy. Wow. And it wasn't to be cocky. It was, it was more so of um, 
stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Right. I play basketball behind the scenes to stay yeah. in physical shape. Mm -hmm. And I told myself if I ever had the opportunity to play on the NBA floor, yeah. it's non-negotiable. I'm going all for it. Mm -hmm. Not to be like, hey, I can play basketball, but to always let kids know. Yeah. You could have a dream of being a pro athlete. You could have a dream of being a NBA, a rap, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But where you are today could be the platform to where you're trying to take it. Yeah. And because I taught every single class with the mindset of moving like a pro athlete, mm -hmm. it attracted the pro athletes, which mm -hmm. put the NBA in my in my scope, in it my did, vision, yeah. which allowed me then to have that opportunity. So wow. that wasn't by accident. That was more so like because I taught every single class as an athlete with that mindset, mm -hmm. it attracted the athletes, which allowed me to play on that floor. Right. For sure. Right. That's good. That's good. Um, you talk about how you found your identity on the bike. Yeah. What did you discover in that time? Whew. I discovered in order to succeed, in order to grow, you got to fail. My dad, like I said, my dad had a different method of madness. Mm -hmm. All growing up, he, would, he never accepted failure. Mm -hmm. It was always looked down upon. Mm -hmm. So because the failure was looked down upon, I was scared to even attempt. Yeah. So I did a lot of just existing. I never really was able to live my true childhood and attempt things because I was scared to fail knowing the repercussions of my dad. Mm -hmm. Now where I am in, as, as an adult, I realize I've only learned, I've only became successful, I've only evolved through failure. Yeah. The first attempt in learning. Mm. Fail. Yeah. I got this from Will Smith. Fail fast, fail now, fail here, fail forward. Yeah. I realize everything that I do is a failure that's turned into a lesson, which has turned into a blessing. Yeah. I'm rapping right now. I shouldn't be doing you that. Yeah, <laughs> listen, spitting bars. That's one thing that I realized uh, from my career on moving on a bike is attempt new things because you're going to learn about yourself in ways that you never thought you could. Yeah. I never thought I would write a book. I'll be very transparent mm -hmm. with you. I failed English in 11th grade, not because I can't read or write, because I just mm -hmm. didn't apply myself. Yeah. So the scope of me writing a book was never, I never even thought about that. Right. So when the opportunity presented itself, at first I was like, yo, nah. But mm -hmm. then I was like, you know what? I'm okay failing. I'm okay being vulnerable because yeah. I realized that's my ultimate strength. Right. I'm okay being in that space of like, I guess for a lot of people, they're like, especially the black men that take Peloton classes, they're mm -hmm. like, yo, thank you for your vulnerability. And I'm like, I didn't realize I was being vulnerable. Right. But I'm just like, you know what? Mm -hmm. If that's what's received, yes. then let's teach with that space. Mm -hmm. Because I see a lot more people now of color, especially the older black men that like really didn't, Focus on their mental. Yeah. Focusing on it a lot more now, and mm -hmm. to have any sort of like role in that space, yeah. it does mean everything to me. So uh, yeah. I learned that you may be in a position to inspire a lot of other people and not even know it. Yeah. So as long as you wake up every single day and keep your faith forward and move with the purpose and execute with an intention, mm -hmm. you could be saving lives and not even realizing it. That's but so you got to save your life first. Yeah, I love that. Um, you talk. We talked about you still being on the bike, but still having to mop yeah. as well or feeling like you had to mop. Yeah. Did you deal with a scarcity mindset in that moment? Because I know you're still sleeping on your yeah. friend's floor and you're like, I got to prove this to my dad. I just didn't, I thought that the cycling thing was a, too good to be true. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's no way that an opportunity could present itself so fast and get executed and like my life change. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm a firm believer of the as fast as things come into your life is as fast as it can go. That part. So I, yeah, actually part of it was the scarcity of being like, let me not let this go in case this doesn't go right. Yeah. And I have something to fall back onto. Mm -hmm. um, I think Ruth being like, listen, I got you, mm -hmm. you straight, like yeah. was the level of comfort that I needed to be like, all right, I can let this thing go. Mm -hmm. But there was definitely um, a sense of like, yo, don't let it go because like, Nobody's ever went from mopping floors to teaching before. Right, right. So like when it's when it's never been done and you're the one doing it, Ooh. it's so scary because you're like, mm -hmm. I'm creating the path in front of me. There's not there's no path to follow. Right. I have to create it. So sometimes it's, it's definitely scary in that space. Yeah. But having people like Ruth that provide a level of comfort, mm -hmm. um, provide you assistance instead of resistance, Hello. such a key in life. That's such a key so in life. Good. That's man, Ruth is She's the a, goat. The goat. <laughs> no, the literally. goat for sure. Oh my goodness. So you became the first black instructor at Peloton yeah. and then we had the George Floyd um, death happen yeah. which affected everybody in the world um, in that moment what parallels and what did you feel similarities from your childhood being the mainly the only black which is a predominantly white um, town yeah. where you were mainly the black and only black in school what were there any similarities there where you felt like I'm living this all over again there was one thing in particular. Mm -hmm. um, I want to give a lot of credit to the East Hampton community, to be honest with you, because mm -hmm. they accepted my family mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the black families out there mm -hmm. with open arms and love. Yeah. I want to be very clear about that. Mm -hmm. I came to East Hampton in 1990, 
eight. Mm -hmm. My dad bought a plot of land and built the house up. Right. Um, and my mom was working at, out there for seven years at the time. I was going to school out there for a little bit. So mm -hmm. they definitely welcomed us with open arms, the teachers, the community, my friend's parents. Mm -hmm. But there was one person in particular who did not. And that was our next door neighbor, the person who lived right next to us. Wow. Uh, all growing up, she would call the cops on us for the most outrageous thing. It was one of those, you know when you have a neighbor, mm -hmm. or like one of those people. Yeah. Like me walking in the neighborhood, drag on, cops called. Me coming down the block, car music, cops called. Me playing basketball outside, in the cops called. To the point that the East Hampton police would come by the house mm -hmm. and be like, yo, what up, AT, you good? Like, it Make became sure you're a, good. It became that relationship. Wow. Where the cops are like, yo, we just have to do our do diligence and drive by, mm -hmm. but we understand what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So they actually would give me grace. Wow. So that's why, I, honestly, I, sh I shout out all the cops out there because they understood what I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. I was the only black kid on my block. Yeah. My mom would be like, do not go to the mailbox with your durag on. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why are we not? What are you talking about? I'm getting the mail. Right. Your neighbor, the neighbor is going to see us. And I'm like, mom, you've worked your entire life. You sacrificed to build this entire beautiful home, mm -hmm. raise us here to not feel comfortable in your own environment because somebody else doesn't want you to live here. Mm. And I remember when the George Floyd happened, the only way I could explain it to the Peloton members is, hypothetically speaking, I get into an inter interaction with a police officer, he's having a bad day, I may be having a bad day. Mm -hmm. That tension can cause a little bit of escalated, um, uh, an escalated situation, mm -hmm. and now my ego gets in the way of me making it home safe. Right. And now the only way you're gonna understand that is when you click onto the bike on Friday morning, mm. and it's like, yo, where's AT? Oh, that, that oh, I didn't even think I could, I'm right. not exempt from this. Yeah. Just because I ride a bike, just because I'm on a platform, because mm -hmm. people know me, does not mean I'm exempt from the mm -hmm. everyday struggles of black men in America, or just black people in general in America. Yeah. And I use the example of, um, at the time, I lived in Brooklyn when I started Peloton. Mm -hmm. I drive across the bridge in Brooklyn. I'm viewed as a drug dealer due to my nice car and because I wear sweats and I have a durag on. Mm -hmm. But the minute I cross the bridge into Manhattan, oh, you're an athlete, you're good. Yeah. So I tell people all the time, like, those, like I've been pulled out of my car driving across Brooklyn mm -hmm. at gunpoint, not because I did anything wrong, because the cop thought I had something in the car. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, due to my training in military school and mm -hmm. understanding how to talk to authority, mm -hmm. the minute a cop pulls up on me, I know how to make him aware that I respect the rank, right. I respect the situation, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that I'm safe and you're safe. Mm -hmm. So certain things like that, that like my dad, that's why I give credit to him sending me to military school, because mm -hmm. I was super hot-headed as a young kid, mm -hmm. where like I could say the wrong thing and it could go up. Right. And because of military school, when you, set, when you spend so much time with somebody yelling in your face, mm -hmm. telling you what to do, and you can't do a damn thing about it, yeah. it allows you to be disciplined in a space where it can make, allow you to get home safe. Mm -hmm. So to just bring it all back, mm -hmm. um, that was the only way I could articulate it to the Peloton community mm -hmm. to help them understand what I go through on an everyday basis, yeah. which means that's what other black individuals go through on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the community was extremely receptive to it. Yeah. Because for me, I don't need you to, people are saying, I stand with you, I stand with you. Nah, I'm moving, move with me. Ooh. Like, we ain't gotta stand no yeah. I'm trying to move somewhere and yes. I need you to move. I need you to move within your household, move your mm -hmm. kids' mind, help yes. them ch help change their perspective. So when they deal with somebody in their school system that looks like me, mm -hmm. they're comfortable because their parents provide them information, mm -hmm. help them understand that like, yo, that's AT, his mm -hmm. people, they good. Yeah. If we can do that, if I could reach one, I could teach one. So that's why I show up to work every single day with that level of, I have to, mm -hmm. because I understand that for somebody out there, I may be the first interaction with a black person, mm -hmm. which may be the difference in them raising their kids and interacting within their community. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. was that moment for me, for sure. I love that. And speaking of community, you started a foundation. Yes. I want to talk about that because you started in, in 2020. Yeah, did yeah. this have anything to do with what was going on or did you have more downtime? Is that why you... It, it was a combination of downtime. It was also a combination of... Um, I, like... <laughs> after my grandmother passed away in 2018, I went to Haiti for the first time as an adult. Mm -hmm. I was able to identify where I came from. Mm -hmm. I was able to identify in real time the sacrifices that were implemented. Yeah. I was able to identify I was one sacrifice away from growing up in Haiti, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also understood that, once again, those who can must. Mm -hmm. I've been provided so many blessings, so many opportunities, so many connections, so many resources. What's the point of holding those in? Right. The goal is to extend your hand to do better, to mm -hmm. feel good, to look good, yes. to do better. This is the part where like, you've reached a certain space in life mm -hmm. where you're moving out of frequency in a space where your cup is overflowing. Mm -hmm. And within those overflowing gifts and blessings, you gotta provide it to other people, otherwise yeah. they go wasted. Mm -hmm. So the Do Better Foundation was founded um, 
2020 with two of my best friends who are my managers, one uh, Nigerian American, one Korean American, and I'm Haitian American. Wow. We all have the immigrant mindset yes. and that level of understanding of how we grew up. Mm -hmm. um, and we just came to this conclusion of being like, yo, we're so fortunate to be raised how we were raised, to have the parents that we have for the sacrifices that they did. Mm -hmm. We got to look out for the kids that look like us, from mm -hmm. the environments that we come from and from mm -hmm. the environments that we don't come from. Yeah. Whether that's kids of the inner city community, kids from Haiti, kids from Korea, kids from Nigeria, mm -hmm. people that are in the military, that's dude close to my heart. Mm -hmm. The Do Better Foundation was created to provide people opportunities to wellness resources mm -hmm. that they just truly may not have. Yeah. Everything that I was afforded, therapy, after school programs, mm -hmm. nutrition, uh, yeah. uh, mentors, um, guidance, like everything that I realized that like those small details, mm -hmm. which all compiled into make me who I am today, yeah. I'm just trying to give that to other kids. Simply it. put, yeah. simply put. And it, it. It's, it feels great to do it with your friends mm -hmm. who are your managers, but friends and family first. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's, uh, it's definitely a validating thing to wake up and be like, yo, on Thanksgiving, we got to go give out turkeys to the kids mm -hmm. in Brooklyn, but we're going to make sure we do it with the public school system. That way there's a, like, yes. things like that feel so purposeful because then mm -hmm. when we go, yo, let's go sit courtside at the Nets game, it feels validating to be like, yo, yes. we're courtside, we're chilling now, but look at all the purposeful things that we did together. Right. So it makes the mm -hmm. friendship purposeful as well. So I'm, I love the fact that I get to do it with my boys. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, it hits you, different. You love them, yeah. I love them. I love that. I love that. Them. I love that. Um, you've accomplished all these things. What is next for Alex Toussaint? Oh, man. I don't know what's next. Mm -hmm. Because one of the hardest things for me to do is think that forward being that I never thought I would be where I am today. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's next. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that my aperture for, has opened up for me to test new things. That's good. So I'm not going to block a blessing due to pride and ego. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell myself what I can't do. Mm -hmm. I'm more going to tell myself what I should try to do. So I'm, I don't know what's next. I actually can't even tell you. Like mm -hmm. Even off camera, I can't tell you what's You're next because right. I'm in a space right now of being like, mm -hmm. We dropped the shoe, we dropped the book, we did the foundation. I just want to take time to just like accept those blessings yeah. and then have an understanding of where we want to go next without rushing it. So I truly don't know. Yeah. And I, like, that's okay not knowing. Yeah. But I know that I'm not going to block the blessing when it, once it presents itself. That's good. Yeah. So my last question, this is for my ladies because everybody be asking. <laughs> They want to know. Like, wanna I've know. had people like literally hit me. You know him? <laughs> he, is he single? Now, we're, you're very private about very, your personal yeah. life, so we don't have to get into that. But I do want to know, what does Alex look for in a woman? I mean, to be very transparent with you, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say my mother, but I was raised from a woman that did everything. Mm -hmm. Pops got sick, diagnosed with colon cancer. Mom mm -hmm. went back to school, got a PhD became the breadwinner of the family, became mm -hmm. a, like a just boss ass woman, mm -hmm. but always had family time. Like, so you gotta, oh man, I don't even, never had, I never had this question. I gotta look at you and be able to know that you can raise a family on the same morals and principles. Mm -hmm. And even if they're different, they're still aligned. Mm -hmm. I have to know that even on my worst days, you're gonna treat me like it's my best days. Mm -hmm. And I got to know that you take care of yourself because yeah. in order to be present with me, you got to be present with yourself. That's you got to do all the invisible work to make sure you arrive mm -hmm. every single day feeling like the best version of you. Right. And that way that would allow me to take care of you the best way that I know possible. All right. Well, there you have it. That's what he's looking for in a woman. All right. Because they, I've literally had people like me. DM me and ask me like, you know him? And I'm like, yeah, that's my dog. And they're like, What's up? Uh, you know, you know what though. I, there's we give so much of ourselves publicly we that do. like there's parts of my of my life that I'm like I just keep private because mm -hmm. it protects my peace. Yep. So I try to tell people like, yo, Smart. I'm all for sharing your relationships and whatever you got going on, on social media. Mm -hmm. But like, just because I know how much my peace means to me, mm -hmm. I want to be able to go home at night and know that my peace is protected. So yes. whether it's like family relationships, girlfriend relationships, whatever, like mm -hmm. there's just certain things that I keep close to the heart. No, for sure. Because uh, what you give people, they can take away. So. Mm -hmm. no, I learned that the hard way. Yeah. 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 No, that's that's really good. That's good. Alex, thank you. I appreciate you, Queen. Come on, you I know that. I love you. you. I love you. It's so an honor much. to be here with you today. Your story is phenomenal. Thank you for sharing it with us. Guys, make sure you go get his book, Activate Your Greatness. It is available everywhere. We want to make this a New York Times bestseller. Um, I already know you're well on the way to that, but definitely want to make this. I appreciate you so much. Thank a you. huge success. Thank you for having me, Queen. Yes, thank absolutely. You. 
So at the close of our show, we do what's called Positive Outcomes, okay. where our listeners write into us, and um, we give them advice. Love it. All right. So this one says, Dear Crystal, I've battled with so many demons in my life, but as I heal through all the traumatic life experiences, I have triggers and I'm still working on myself. I am dealing with something that I have never experienced in my 46 years of life, self-esteem issues. Mm. I have gained weight in my stomach area, lost a front tooth, and just feel so unpretty and unattractive. I hate looking in the mirror and getting dressed. It's too much for me. I feel like a whale in everything. I've been there, girl. Like nothing is fitting right now, so I, I know where you are. Um, I don't have the motivation and discipline to do anything about it because I'm a stress eater. I am overwhelmed with being the breadwinner of my family, taking care of my sick parents as best I can, and I'm working a job with a team who relies on me for everything. Self-care is very important, but what do you do when everyone thinks you are the shero and the fixer like Olivia Pope? What do you do when you are smiling on the outside and drowning in darkness on the inside, but masking it all because you can't change the purpose God placed on you to be the fixer? Mm. How do you balance? How do you find balance because you can't question God's plan for you? Definitely can't question God's plan. Mm -mm. Wow, wow. Um, you want me to provide feedback on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer of breakdown and breakthrough. Mm. Um, if you're going through that dark space, instead of trying to avoid it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, accept it. Yeah. But uh, like, hear what I'm saying though. Mm -hmm. Break down mm -hmm. to break through. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, it's it's hard for a lot of people when you look into the mirror and identify yourself from that external. This goes back to feel good, look good, do better. Yes. When you identify yourself from that external look, you mm -hmm. forget what's inside of you. Mm -hmm. I think for that young that young queen. Um, I don't say soul searching is the right word, but going back to that internal perspective mm -hmm. and understanding how beautiful you are on the inside. Yeah. The re what she just said, that like God put her in a position. Mm -hmm. There's a reason as to why. Yep. She's a chosen one. Mm -hmm. You got to go back and look at yourself internally and, and find that internal light of being like, mm -hmm. I am the chosen one mm -hmm. before you look into the mirror. Yeah. Because if I look into the mirror first thing in the morning, I'm not going to be proud of what I see regardless of what's going on in life. Mm -hmm. You got to identify the feel good aspect. Yes. Then you could go from to the look good aspect. Mm -hmm. Within that space, though, while you're identifying that internal light, I would say find accountability partners that are going to help uplift you and not outshine you. Mm. I realize in my darkest of all days, for the days that I, I can't get up, for the days that I don't feel motivated, yeah. for the days that I'm like, yo, exactly what she's saying, that like you look into the mirror and you like question yourself. Yeah. The people around me keep me floating when I feel like I'm drowning. Mm. I like to quote Jay-Z, if everybody in your clique is rich, your clique is rugged, nobody would fall because everybody would be each other's crutches. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rich with integrity, rich with perspective, rich with love, rich with purpose. Yeah. If the people around you understand what you lack, mm -hmm. they, they, they can help provide it for you when you can't provide it for yourself. That's that accountability. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Dang, that, that one hit me. Yeah, that one hit. That is so good. Alex, all right now. <laughs> I got a good friend I can call <laughs> when I need some help. <laughs> Um, the next thing we threw is what I'm going through and what I'm growing through. Mm -hmm. And I'll start this one. I, um, I am going through um, really seeing what else is, is for me. Because I'm asking you what's next for Alex. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what's next for Crystal. You know, and um, making sure that I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm growing through walking through seasons of uncertainty. You know, and it's kind of hard when I'm a tr I like to control yeah, things. I like yeah. to know, okay, this is where I'm going. This is what's yeah. next. This is what I'm doing. But walking and having faith is um, where I'm, what I'm growing through right now. So it's, gr it's going, going through. through and growing mm -hmm. through. And sometimes it's the same for people. Sometimes whatever you're going through, you're growing at the same time. So yeah, to piggyback, I'm going through an evolution stage that I don't even know what's happening. Mm -hmm. I just, in all honesty, every workout that I did last week, I cried in my workouts. Really? I don't know, break down and break through. I don't know what Something. evolution is happening, but mm -hmm. God is like, yo, you going to take this next step. Mm -hmm. But in order to take it, you have to shed some weight mm -hmm. throughout the process. I'm going to have you break down yes. and I'm going to have you break through. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea what this evolution stage is. I just mm -hmm. know it's happening in real time. Yeah. Oof. Um, so that's what I'm going through. I guess that's what I'm growing through too. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's the same. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. I have moments where I literally like break down in my workouts too. And like tears of joy, like yeah. not sad tears. Yeah. I'm talking like tears of joy where I'm just like gratefulness, like, yes. gratefulness. Yes. like really thankful mm -hmm. for the opportunity yeah. that I don't even see, but I feel it's, it's coming. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's good. I don't even see it, but I feel it. And God's yes. like, yo, 
you have to keep moving towards it. Mm -hmm. Get up and get out. Keep executing. Keep, yes. I'm going to give it to you, but mm -hmm. you, you just can't. I'm not going to throw it in your lap. Yeah. You got to go get it. I love yeah. that. I love that. The next thing we do is keep it blank, sweetie. And I'm going to say for this episode, keep it pushing, sweetie. Okay. Yeah. Keep it pushing. Keep it pure. I love that. Keep it pure. I love it. That's good. Alex. This has been amazing. Look, honor, Seriously. Queen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Keep It Positive, Sweetie. If you want to write into our Positive Outcomes listener letter, you can write into Keep It Positive, Sweetie at gmail.com and that's Sweetie with an IE. You can follow Kips on all platforms at Keep It Positive, Sweetie. And you can follow me on all platforms at Love Chris Renee and that's L U V. Alex, tell the people where they can find you. Uh, Alex Tucson 25 on Instagram and all social media platforms. That's as well. right. Yes, and guys, do not forget to get his book. Make sure you get your copy. That's Make right. You, you will not copy. be disappointed. Alex, as always, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I love you, my friend. I love you. Thank, Thank you, for, you for coming. Come on. Come on. We got to do this again next season <laughs> yes, as well. Yes. When we go through the next chapter of Life and Evolution, I can sit down and be like, remember, here's what I went through. This is what I love. And here's what I'm on right now. I would love to. I know the audience would too. I, Thank I you. Thank you, Queen. I appreciate love you, baby. man. Love you. So good. Love you. Dear God, thank you so much for this fellowship. Thank you for letting Alex get here safely. Thank you for him keeping his promise to come on this episode. I know that's going to touch many lives. He's already done that. And I ask that you continue to watch over him. Watch over everyone that has their hand on this podcast. I ask that everything that we talk about today just helps somebody in some type of way. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's do it.